Many Filipinos today know a lot about the Spanish, American, and Japanese times, but not as much about the period before any of those. It's a bit unfortunate because, way before these foreign influences, our ancestors had a great life in what can be called a paradise. Even though it wasn't flawless, that time was like our own golden age. This view was held not only by our national hero, as a result members of the Catapunin, but also by respected historians like Teodoro Agoncillo and some church historians. Let's delve into some fascinating facts about the time before the foreigners came to the Philippines and explore why many believe life was better during that period in our nation's history. Our ancestors were smart and knew how to read and write using a system called Bibane. It's surprising that when the Spanish arrived, they were amazed to find out that more Filipinos could read and write than people in Madrid, the capital of Spain. Bibane is one of Asia's alphabets, and it came from ancient Sanskrit in India. There are 17 symbols in Bibane, and we can still see it in old artifacts. Bibane disappeared for a few reasons. Unlike China, where people wrote on advanced materials, our ancestors used leaves, bamboo, and tree bark to write, and they used sharp tools or tree sap as ink. The Boxer Codex suggests that what our ancestors wrote was not very important. They didn't have long books or histories. They mostly wrote short letters and reminders to each other. The Spanish also played a part in Bebin disappearing. Historian Teodoro Agoncillo thought that Spanish missionaries, trying to spread Catholicism, destroyed many Bibane writings because they believed they were the work of the devil. In ancient times in the Philippines, people were skilled in crafting beautifully made war and trade boats. These boats, resembling birds, were extraordinary in their unique speed and ability to navigate smoothly on water. There were three main types of boats. First is the Balangay. This is like a very fast canoe capable of carrying up to 100 people. It was used for trade and warfare. Karakowa. This is a larger boat designed for long-distance journeys and significant adventures. It could accommodate up to 200 people and had sturdy sails and oars. Kumpit. This is a small, swift boat used for exploration and quick attacks. It was fast and equipped with light guns. The craftsmanship involved in building these boats was akin to an art. Workers utilized various materials such as wood, bamboo, and rattan. They excelled in creating boats that were sturdy and navigated well in water. These boats played a crucial role in fortifying the safety of the islands of the Philippines. They protected towns from attacks, demonstrated strength in the region, and aided in trade with neighboring countries. The ancient Filipinos were indeed intelligent and had profound knowledge in crafting high-quality ships. Before the Spanish galleon trade, our ancestors in the Philippines were already trading and talking with people from faraway places like the Middle East. Instead of using money, they traded things like precious minerals and stuff they made with Arabs, Indians, Chinese, and others. Some foreigners liked the Philippines so much that they decided to live here because it was beautiful, and the people were nice. The Chinese were really impressed with the Filipinos back then, especially because they were very honest. The Chinese traders wrote about how they trusted the Filipinos a lot because the Filipinos never stole their things and always paid what they owed. The trust was so strong that some Chinese traders would leave their things on the beaches for the Filipinos to pick up and trade. When the Chinese came back, the Filipinos would give them back everything they left, without anything missing. Contrary to the common image of our ancestors as traditional tribes people with spears and loincloths, they were skilled in warfare. Besides using swords and spears, 
They were knowledgeable in making and using guns and cannons. Raja Suleiman, for instance, was known to possess a massive 17-foot-long iron cannon. Beyond offensive weapons, our ancestors were adept at constructing large fortresses and wearing body armor. In the southern regions, the Moros, in particular, wore full body armor and were armed with guns. Despite their proficiency in combat, the Spanish colonization of the Philippines was not as challenging as one might expect. The Spanish cleverly exploited the regional differences among the pre-colonial Filipinos, using a strategy of dividing and conquering. This tactic proved highly effective, allowing the Spanish to control the country for over 300 years. In the past, the relationship between the ruler and the subjects was simple. The people paid tribute and served the ruler in times of peace and war, receiving protection in return. Looking at the evidence, it seems that our ancestors practiced an early form of the social contract, a theory endorsed by notable thinkers like Thomas Hobbes, John Locke, and Jean-Jacques Rousseau. This theory suggests that rulers derive their right to rule from the consent of the people. On the flip side, if a ruler turned corrupt or incompetent, the people had the right to remove him. This was precisely the kind of government our ancestors had. While Dadas technically came from the upper classes, they could be ousted by the lower classes if found lacking in their duties. Moreover, anyone, including women, could become a Datu based on qualities like bravery, wisdom, and leadership. In the olden days in the Philippines, people had many different jobs that helped their communities. Some grew food like rice, while others caught fish from the sea. In some places, people relied on hunting and gathering in the forest for their food. Some ventured into professions like mining, textiles, and smithing. Filipinos actively mined gold, copper, and iron, developing sophisticated techniques for extraction and refinement. These metals were then used to create tools, weapons, jewelry, and decorative objects, showcased in archaeological finds like the Kala Wit and Campi Land swords. There are even reports suggesting that products of Filipino origin may have reached as far as ancient Egypt. Undoubtedly, our ancestors were highly skilled artisans. Leaders and chiefs made important decisions and kept order in the community. There were also spiritual leaders, like priests and shamans, who took care of religious activities. To protect their communities, some people were trained as warriors and soldiers. Others were experts at sailing and navigating the waters between the islands. All these different jobs showed how diverse and interesting life was in ancient Philippines. People worked together, each doing their part to make their communities thrive. When it came to food, our ancestors didn't face any scarcity. The islands in the Philippines have many different environments, like plains, rainforests, and coasts full of sea life. A long time ago, the people who lived there had everything they needed from nature for food, homes, and medicine. They were smart about how they farmed. They grew things like rice, corn root crops, and fruits using special methods like terracing and intercropping. They didn't harm the land but worked with it to make sure it stayed healthy. These folks didn't just farm. They also hunted animals, fished in rivers and seas, and picked plants they could eat or use as medicine. They had a good balance with nature, taking what they needed without hurting the environment. This way of living helped them thrive and keep everything in harmony. <laughs> 